Hello and welcome. Today we're working on what's the probability of getting a seven on a two dice roll, or what is the estimated probability of all the possible combinations on a two dice roll. I'm going to use Monte Carlo simulation. Hello, my name's Jeff from Finally Learn, where we help you finally learn financial skills. So here's what we have. We did this on a previous video. What if we had die one and die two? We had ones on die one and then one, two, all the way through six on die two. So here you see all the possible combinations. So we have 36 possible combinations. And so our estimated probability, we counted this up and you can do this as a fraction or a percent. So there are six possible ways to get a seven. So six out of 36 of the combinations. And then we did a mean standard deviation, min, max, and a median. we also did the probability. Here's what the probability uh, should look like um, on any large numbers that we do. So the purpose of this video is to do a Monte Carlo simulation where we're going to do up to a thousand different iterations, a thousand different simulations of a die roll. Pretty easy, but these two dice rolls. So let me get started. I'm going to clear out the data and show you how we did this step by step. All right, I've cleared out all the data. So let's set up, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a one die roll and a second die roll and get the sum. So this is a two dice roll. I'm gonna use a function called rand between, so random between. So I'm gonna hit the FX. And so rand between produces a random number between two numbers that you pick. So I'm gonna pick the one and a six. A six sided die has six possibilities, one through six. Now I can copy this across now I've got a two die roll, two dice, and it's a five and a four. And what happens on this is it's volatile. So anytime we change anything in this sheet, it's gonna re-roll that one through six. So you'll see that change multiple times while we're working on this spreadsheet. Now I'm gonna add this up. I'm gonna use a keyboard shortcut. For Mac, it's Command, Shift, and T for total. On Windows, it is Alt and Equals. Now you can do it a different way. Let me show you a different way. If you highlight all this, you can do an auto sum and it puts the actual sum over those two and that's gonna be very helpful. So that's what we're trying to get. So in this case, we rolled a six, a two and a four, that's a six. We can roll again. So let's roll again, we'll do F9 and that's a three and a three and that's a six also. We'll do it again and that's a five and a one, also a six. A six and a one is a seven and so on. So that happens multiple times. Now to do the Monte Carlo simulation, we need to do this a hundred times or 10 times or a thousand times. Now 10 doesn't really matter. It's just, uh, it's nice to do, but, but we're really getting some, um, some ways to estimate if we can do maybe a thousand or a hundred plus, right? A thousand, 10,000, so on. So let me show you how to do it, uh, this Monte Carlo simulation. I have a little table I'm going to build. So the Monte Carlo simulation says um, for this eight, okay, and it will, it will update and change every time that first one is. I want to do that. I want to do it a, a thousand different times. So I'm going to start with a one here. And the one, uh, if I go to my home ribbon and I can go to the fill and the series, and I'm going to put in a column. Uh, step one, so I'm going to do one plus one plus one, right? All the way to uh, 1,000. So I'm going to hit OK. And what it does, Excel is pretty smart. It builds one through 1,000. It stops at 1,000 because we told it to. So now we have 1,000 rows in this uh, column. So what we're going to use is a data table. So I'm going to highlight all this. And so I want to highlight the six, which is the very top of the table all the way through the very last place of a thousand. So I'm gonna to go to data ribbon and then um, I'm going to what if analysis and data table. Now we're gonna ignore the row, but the input, I'm not gonna use the numbers. It's not like I'm putting in the one or the two or the three. I want it just to randomize that dice roll a thousand times. So I'm gonna go over here and just put D6, an empty cell, hit okay. And what you're gonna see is it's all gonna fill in and I may have to move it so it'll refresh the view. So what you see is all the way down 
it's randomized. So I've done a thousand just when few, within a few seconds. I've done a thousand dice rolls of um, two dice and two dice, and I've got a thousand rolls. Okay, so now that gets very interesting because what we're going to do is we're going to count how many of that a thousand are twos and threes, fours, five, so on. Now our estimated, let's, let's go back and look. Our estimated percentages are these right here. So I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste over here. And that was a formula, so I'm going to paste special, paste special values. So there's the values that we have. <clears throat> so we can do the same thing for the estimated uh, mean, standard deviation. So these are the numbers that we calculated. I'm going to copy that and then paste special, paste special values. Okay? So this is what we expect to happen. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to do a sample of 1, a sample of 10, a sample of 100, and a sample of 1,000 and have a way to select and do different things. Okay, so here's how it works. I'm going to go to the... Um, I'm at the data ribbon. I'm going to go to data validation. Uh, data validation says I want to do a list. I'm going to do a drop down list and I want to have these as my four options on my drop down. So I go to the drop down list. I can do sample one. I can do sample of 10. I can do sample of 100 or sample of 1,000. Let's start with 1,000. It's going to be easy to see at first and we'll have different um, ones we can select. So the drop down list helps us to calculate um, how many dice rolls we want to have. Okay, now what I've done is I have named two of the ranges. The first 100 I've named. You can see all the way down for the first 100. And I've done the same thing for the second uh, one, which is 1,000. So all the way down, you can see uh, if we went all the way down to the bottom you can see we've done all the way through a thousand. We got a thousand rolls all the way down and we'll finally get there. Yes. So that is a sample of a thousand. But what we want is we want at the very beginning, um, we want to do a sample of one and a sample of 10. So it's going to be easy. So I'm going to highlight that and call that um, to the left of the formula bar. I'm going to call that sample one. Okay, hit enter. So that now has is a named range. I'm going to do the second one uh, for a sample of 10. So I'm going to highlight it here. Sample 10. Okay, so now what I have, I've got a sample of 1, a sample of 10, sample of 100, sample of 1,000. Okay, so we're going to do a sample of 1,000 right now, but you'll see what happens is it changes and it'll pick just 10 or just 100 or just 1,000 or the full 1,000. So let's count how many twos there are. All right, we're going to do a function called count ifs. And count ifs, here's what we need to do. We need to count. And I'm going to type in, I'm going to do it two steps just so you can see how this works. There's one called sample 1,000. Let's do it sample 1,000. You see, if we enter sample 1,000, then it gives us this um, array, which is 11 and 8, 11, 8, and 9, and 7, 11, 8, 9, 7. So you see it picks up that named range. And we're going to count how many twos there are. So that's count ifs. So according to this, we have 29 twos. And if we count all the way down, we have, well, let's do it this way. We have all these items that are um, the total of each of the 2 through 12. All right, so our formula is sample 1,000, and then it is F5 for the county Fs. Now, let's do it in a way. Let's change this slightly. So instead of just saying sample 1,000, we want it to change from sample 1, sample 10, sample 100, to sample 1,000. So there's a function called indirect. And I'm going to just put that here in the criteria range. And I'm going to point to where it says sample 1000 and make it absolute with dollar signs. And then I'm going to close that parentheses on that. And so what will happen is it'll have the same type of number, 
but it will change. Let me show you how this works. Okay, let me try it again. Copy. And then I'll paste all these, yes. So what happens is if we change this from sample 1000 it change to sample 100, it changes and only does a dice roll of 100 rather than dice rolls of 1000. All right, let's go back to the 1000. All right, so what's our percent? 25 divided by the original 1000. We're going to make that absolute, of course. So that is going to be something like 2.2%. I'm going to copy that down. And then I'm going to total this up. So there's my sum. So 100%. Now, we've already pulled our estimated. Um, so let's do the difference, what, what we expect and what our actual percent was from the sample, 2.8% minus 2.78%. Well, it's just going to be a small little number. Um, here, it changed to 2.9, so minus 2.78. Every time we do something, the, the, um, the calculation happens again. We do another 1,000 or another 100 or whatever. So let's copy this down, copy paste all the way down. And so what I've done is I've set it up where if the percent of the sample is larger, then you'll see green. If the percent sample is smaller, you'll see a red. And then the color uh, darkens if it's further away, uh, a bigger number or whatever. So let's see what, we, what we're looking at here. We expect that 2.78% um, of all the rolls the probability will be um, they'll get a two. And here is three and a half percent, so a little bit higher than our expected probability. Now let's do the mean. Let's do the same kind of thing here. So let's point to, let's point to that uh, label there. So we're going to have a thousand, a sample is a thousand. I'm going to do um, the mean. So that is the average and I'm going to do indirect, just like we did before. Indirect, I'll point to the sample, make it absolute. I'll close my parentheses for both of them. And so for the, the mean of the sample of 1000 is 7.042, and we expect it to be exactly 7.000, right? Well, now I'm going to copy this down and just edit, if that makes sense. So that is the mean all the way down, the average. So I'm going to change this to standard deviation of the sample size, because this is a sampling. It's not all the possible rolls, but it's just a sample, a thousand dice rolls. The max, what's the maximum of this? So I'm going to change the average to max. On the minimum, I'm going to change the um, average to min, M-I-N. And on the median, the average will be median rather than average. All right, so our error is going to be 7.04 minus 7. That will change as we uh, update with a new formula. So what we see is with 1,000 samples, we see we're off on sixes. We, we expect 13.89% uh, probability with sixes, and we've got 11.7 in this sample size. So it's not quite as smooth, um, bell-shaped as, as the estimated probability, right? And so if we do it again, if we do another F9, what we'll see is it changes. It'll change again, and different numbers come out. Now, we did this. Let me show you um, what the drop-down does for us. If we do a sample of one, well, just one dice roll, well, that's at 11. Well, we expected that to be about 5.5% of the time. Well, that, that was the answer. So that is uh, 111, and then the mean and max and min is not going to be very interesting because you have one sample. Sample of n equals 1. Well, what if we do 10? You can see how this works. You got a little bit more uh, variability 
If you have sample size of 100, you can see the distribution looks more and more like we expect. If you have sample of a 1,000, then it looks very similar to our original estimated probability here. Now, the way we got this number is we did, um, we highlighted these, and if you go um, over on the home ribbon, you can analyze data, and it kind of recommends what we should look at. So analyze the data, I just did this, and so that is exactly how you do the, um, the chart here. So we can do this, let's try it again, let's do a 100. Do you see it's not gonna look um, like we expect? We'll have some uh, bigger deviations from what our estimated is. But if we do a 1,000, then there's smaller errors and we can do it multiple times. So what we've done, we've done a simple dice roll, of two die, and we've done it a thousand times and we can see what happens over time. By the way, how do we get this, um, the um, green and yellow? We go to conditional formatting. You can do um, color scales. And so what I did is color scales. I did um, green is good, yellow and red. That's what I did. So let's look at the actual rules. The color scale would be if it's uh, greater than uh, 2%, basically, it's red, greater, um, less than two, minus 2%, positive 2% is green, and in the middle is white. And so that is going to give us uh, where we can see, we can see visually, hey, this is a little bit less than what we expected, and this is a little bit more than what we expected. We got more fours than we thought on this one. And if we do it again, it'll change to something else. We, we receive more sevens than what we thought. All right, so this is how you do Monte Carlo simulation. You can do it on lots of things. I illustrated it with uh, two dice roll, so I think that's pretty helpful. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.